kwa majina anaitwa Masi ama Marcelin Lumbasio na niko na jina lingine pia la uigizaji na Jita Maragoli the trending queen na mimi ni mama ya watoto wawili ambapo mmoja siko naye alafu mimi pia ni mwigizaji so mimi nikianza kujieleza vizuri nimekuwa na mtoto wacha niseme watoto lakini mmoja akaniondokea na ni mtoto ambaye ameniondokea kwa, kwa hali ambayo si ya kawaida unajua wakati mtu amegonjeka ni vizuri na kwangu umeona mtu amegonjeka mwishowe hata akikata roho unasema hata ndio akate roho wakati wa mwisho nilikuwa naye nimekuwa na mtoto kwa jina anaitwa Emmanuel nikamzaa mimi nimemlea mtoto wangu kafika kipindi ambacho tuliachana na baba yake mzazi na akaniachia mtoto akiwa na miezi tisa. nikachukua fursa hii ya kuona mtoto wangu bado ni mdogo nirudi kwa mikono ya wazazi wangu niweze kulea mtoto nikiwa huko wazazi wangu hawako nikataa walinipokea lakini katika hicho kipindi nikawa nakuvumilia kumlea ule mtoto licha ya kukosa kupata usaidizi mimi kama mama ina staili nikae na mtoto niende nishughulike yeye yani ni, ni jue vile atakula ni jue vile atakunywa ni jue vile ataishi kwa sababu ni mtoto mdogo una uwezi kuachia mtu mtoto mdogo kama bado wako chini ya miezi nane, tisa hapo unaweza kama labda ni miaka tatu hapo lakini Mungu akawa mwaminifu kwangu kwa vile alinipa huyo mtoto akanipatia nguvu na ujasiri wa kulea ule mtoto kwa, hadi kile kipindi ambacho nilikuwa najua nitakapomlea mtoto atafika mkubwa atafika umri fulani na mimi pia niende nitafute Yesa ule umri ambao mtoto ameenda shule mama nimesema hapana ha, sasa naweza acha mtoto wangu na nitafute. Na kweli Mungu akawa mwaminifu kwa kipindi ambacho nimekuwa nikimlea ule mtoto mpaka mtoto wakati ameelekea kufika miaka tatu. mtoto kuniondokea. Na vikumbuka vizuri mtoto wangu nimekuwa nimekuwa na kukaa naye kwa muda mrefu na Mungu akanisaidia nikapata kazi mahali kazi ambayo nilikuwa naifanya kama kwa muda wa miezi tatu tu. Sasa nikasema hapana kwa sababu huyu mtoto niko naye na hakuna msaada wote naweza napata kutoka kwa babake mzazi wacha ni muachie mama yangu mzazi niende nimtafutie mtoto wangu. Nilipokuwa nimeenda kazi nimekuwa ninaishi kazini kila weekend ikifika Saturday na Sunday natoka niende nimuone mtoto wangu nyumbani makali alikuwa anaishi na mama yangu mzazi. Nikiweza kukumbuka vizuri sana ilikuwa Saturday Friday mimi nimekuwa nikifanya kazi kwa redio kama presenter nilikuwa na show inaitwa Sasa Drive nikaenda paka nyumbani nikafika nikapata mama yangu ayuko mtoto yuko anacheza kitu ya kwanza nilimwona mtoto wangu mtoto wangu alikuwa anacheza na watoto wenzake lakini hakunisalamia kama mama lakini aliniona tu na mimi nikaingiwa na roho ya uzuni nikamshika na ikawa nime make up my mind nimemwambia mtoto wangu sasa mahali nimefika naenda kuishi na wewe nikifika kesho Monday tunaenda na wewe Monday ikifika ilikuwa Saturday tunaenda na wewe kule ninaishi kama mama nikawa na mtoto wangu nikamwona mtoto wako na furaha na vile ambavyo nilikuwa ninampenda huyo mtoto nilikuwa hata nikienda nyumbani siwezi kumwachilia nitashinda tu naye hapo lakini usiku huo ndo kuamkia mtoto wangu akuje kuniwacha mtoto alinionyesha upendo ambao sijauona kama mama yake kidogo ananirukia na ananiongelesha maneno mingi aruke mpaka kwa kiti mpaka nauliza wazazi wangu mtoto wangu yuko sawa wananiangalia wananiambia mtoto wako sawa ni venye amekuona mama amezidi kukua na furaha nikaambia mama yangu nime make up mind nimeona monday nitaenda nikae na mtoto wangu jumapili hiyo siku ilipofika jumapili Juma, ya jumapili sasa nikawa nimelala na nikiwa katika ile hali ya kulala nikawa na kuangaika yani Mungu saa zingine huyu Mungu tunaomba ni ajabu kwa sababu kuna anakuanga ana na ishara za kukuonyesha kama kuna hali inakuja kutendeka lakini saa zingine usipoelewa huwezi kujua ni nini inatendeka lakini nikaona nimenyimwa usingizi kuanzia saa nane kwa mkia jumapili ya mtoto wangu kufariki nikanyimwa usingizi nikijaribu kuomba inakuwa ni ngumu kuomba <coughs> nikaona kidogo nikarudi kulala nikasikia simu yangu inafanya message kuna mchungaji tulikuwa tunaomba naye akaniandikia message akaniambia amuka uombe shetani anatafuta njia ya kupanda magugu katika maisha yako nilipoanza kuomba nikashindwa kabisa nikarudi kulala ikifika saa kumi na moja ambapo jambo huwa halinitendekei kawaida nikaona baba yangu mzazi amenipigia 
akaniambia nimerauka kanisani kulingana na venye walikuwa wameka kafiu. Sasa Sunday pia watu wakoa waendi kanisani hivyo. Sasa akaniambia nimerauka kanisani kifika saa moja nikuwe nimesha toka kanisa. Tafadhali nimesau ufunguo toka kwa sababu nilikuwa nalala kwa nyanya yangu na mama yangu ako kwa nyumba yake nikamwambia aende akaniambia aende uchukue ufunguo tafadhali mnitumalie kuja kanisani hapo ndo niliamka nikiwa napanda juu maana mali sisi nyanya yangu alikuwa nani nalala ni kama chini na mama yuko juu nikipanda juu nikasikia nikaona kama giza imenifunika nikajiuliza hii giza inanifunika ni nini nilipofika kwa nyumba nikampigia mamangu mlango nikamwambia chenye kilikuwa kim nimetumwa na nikashtuka kwamba niliacha mtoto akiwa huko nikamuuliza mtoto wako wapi mama akaniambia mtoto hata ilipofika saa ya usiku aliamka akaniambia shosho wacha niende nilale na dada yangu na ni jambo ambalo mtoto wangu hajakuwa akilifanya kwa kawaida ilipofika asubuhi kitu kama saa tatu hapo nikiwa nimekaa chini nikaona mtoto wangu amechukua kibeti akaniletea nilikuwa najipaka tu makeup akachukua kibeti akaniletea akachukua simu akaniletea akaniambia tunaenda na wewe nikamwambia Emmanuel hatuwezi enda na wewe nataka niende shughuli niko nazo kwa sababu kuna jirani yangu alikuwa ameniita nyumbani na huyo jirani akawa ameniambia ukikuja tafadhali ujaribu kuja unione huku kwangu kuna mahali tulikuwa tunaendanga kanisani mtu kwa mtoto wangu muende na ye. Na mimi kama kawaida nyumbani najulikana kama mwigizaji. Mimi nilipoenda pale nikaona watoto wa mtao wa kijiji wamekuja hapo wananiambia oh masi watu nakuona tu eh, at least at least umepotea nataka tu tukuone. Na nikaona niliambatana na mtoto wangu na watoto wangu wote wawili msichana na mvulana. Tukiwa katika njia tunaenda tusijafika kwa jirani kwa sababu huyo jirani yetu maana si mbali. Nikaona mtoto wangu ameniambia mama si mama tukupige picha akanipiga picha tatu. Mwisho nikamwambia sasa umenipiga hata mimi nataka nikupige. Nilipompiga picha mtoto aliniambia mama hii picha utakuwa unaonyesha shosho yangu. Hapo nikasikia roho imechemka. Nikamuuliza picha ndakuwa naonyesha shosho yako wewe. Kwani unaenda wapi? Na ni mtoto wa 3 years asiko and expect ataniongelesha such a thing. Akaniambia tu wewe weka tu mama usijali. Mimi nikaweka lakini nikawa na mawazo kwa moyo wangu. Mbona mtoto wangu ananiambia hivi? Kuna vitu Mungu anakuwa anatuonyesha lakini kama hatuko kiroho kujua ni nini Mungu anatuonyesha hatuwezi tukaelewa. Tulitoka na mtoto wangu, tukafika njiani mahali nilipata kulikuwa na maindi. Akaniambia mama tupige picha ingine nikamwambia hapana zenye tumepiga zimetosha. Tukaenda kwa jirani yangu Nikikumbuka vizuri tulikuwa tumekaa hapo nje watoto wake wakakuja wakaniambia tungependa sana masi vinyo unafanyanga comedy zako uwe unatuweka ndani nikamwambia ni sawa mimi sina shida ni, ni, ni kazi nimenifanya na kwangu lakini kila weekend nakuwa nakuja lakini ningependa at, at least kila mtu nione character yake nikajaribu kuangalia character zao niko tu hapo na mtoto mtoto akaniambia mama nasikia njaa nikamwambia huyo jirani yetu kwa sababu ni mtu namjua na ni wa nyumbani nikamwambia saidi yako mtoto wangu na maji na nini na chai mtoto alipokunywa akataka mahindi wakati wa mahindi ilikuwa imekomaa nikachoma mahindi hapo kwa jirani nikampa nikiwa pale nakumbuka nikimwambia jirani yangu mtoto wangu anakuanga mtoto wa kuruka ruka huku na huku tafadhali hiyo kisima iko hapo naona haijafunikwa nigeomba uchukue mabati ufunike juu juu huyu mtoto wangu namjua vizuri na nikaambia mtoto wangu ambaye natembeanga naye maana nilikuwa nikiwa nyumbani naenda mahali najua mimi ni mtu wa, wa kuongea na watu nachukua dada yake na mwambia twende na wewe tukifika mahali u hapo uangalie mtoto nikiwa pale nikaambia dada yake ambaye ni mtoto wangu msichana kwa na miaka 8 nikamwambia blessing angalia mtoto angalia mtoto usijaribu kutoka kuenda mbali na mtoto tukiwa tuko na wewe hapa mtoto wangu akanambia mama nimesikia kwa sababu ananijua mimi na kuanga mkali nikifika upande wa mtoto nikiwa nimeingia kwa nyumba kidogo tunatazama tv na nilikuwa nimeshika simu yangu na nikikumbuka vizuri sana hiyo siku nimeshika hiyo simu yangu ninajua mtoto ako hapo kwa hiyo rumu nyingine na anacheza na ako na dada yake ambapo nilikuwa nimeambia dada yake usijaribu kutoka karibu na mtoto nikajua tu niko sawa ningekuwa peke yangu na huyo mtoto ingekuwa ni different story mimi nika, nikajua tu niko sawa kumbe jirani yangu ameita mtoto wangu msichana na akamwambia blessing kuja nikutume kwa duka na mimi niko huku sijui mtoto akamwambia siwezi enda dukani mama yangu amesema nikae na mtoto akamwambia kuja tu niletee still wa 10 bob 
Lakini cha kushangaza ni kuwa hizo ni habari nimezipata baadaye. Mtoto wangu mdogo ambaye alikufa akaambia dada yake Blessing twende na wewe. Ani alikuwa anakuanga ule mimi nitakaenda na wewe. Mimi nitakaenda. But by the time mtoto alikuwa na insist kufata dada yake, jirani akamwita. Akamwambia usiende, utachelewesha mwenzako kwenda dukani. Wewe kuja tukae na wewe hapa, alafu uende. Mama ya mtoto niko kwa nyumba, sijui kama mtoto wangu ametumwa, ameenda dukani. Nikiwa kwa nyumba Siwezi kujuku. Yani nafika mahali na muambia mwenyezi mungu. Ani penehema ya kuvumilia. Na kustamili uchungu katika moyo wangu. Mana nikikumbuka vizuri. Nimeka na ongea na watoto wa jirani yangu. Tunaona TV. The same time wakona simi yangu wanacheza. Kidogo nikasikia jirani ananita. Na alipo nita alinita na, na sauti ambayo si kupendezwa na ayo. Kutoka inje nikamuliza kuna nini. Nikawana wa mama wako hapo watatu. Majirani nikawauliza na waomba muniambie kuna nini. Mama aliniambia masi. In my mother language, kimaragoli, they normally say, nagekibara korekere na sai. Yani, what she tried to, to, to tell me is that, hii mambo ni ya dunia tuachie mungu. That's when I realized kuna kitu. Then, akashika mkono kwa kichwa and he, she shouted, hui masi, mtoto wako wameanguka kwa kisimu. It was hard to believe Emmanuel was normal. Kwenda kuangalia kwa kisima, kawaida mama, anakuanga, mama ndi ameshika moyo wa mtoto wake. Kwenda kuangalia kwa kisima, niliona Emmanuel mtoto wangu, anakata roo ya mwisho kuenda. Ni kama ule mtoto, alikuwa mekufa, ame zungukia kwa maji, ame kunywa maji, sasa anangoja mama yake ya kuje ndo sasa haende. Mimi nilipo chungulia ni kabuona mtoto wangu, ndo hui ya meinua mikono, imani na niambia mtoto yuko hai, dia meanguka saa hizo kumbe mtoto alianguka kitambo, jirani akaenda kuita majirani kuambia, masi sina abari, na hitu wa wakati mtoto amesha kuwa maiti. Kwa gumu, kukubali. Kwa ndani jirushe dani ya kisima. Fikanga mali na sema mungu, anakuangana sababu na maisha kila mtu. Mana wakati uwa niliona kwa mama mbaya meza, Na mama mba na jo uchungu wa kuza. Niliona nikiingia kwa kisima. Na weza okua mtoto wangu. Nika sahau yo kisima ni a hundred feet. Lakini naona nikifika. Nitaona nitatukua ule mtoto. Bila kujua kama mtoto kumbe alikufa kitambo. Watu kitambo wa itane mtoto alikuwa mekufa. Swali. Mtoto wa mingia aje kwa kisima. Mabati likuwa kwa kisima iko wapi. Mtoto alianguka na mabati kwa kisima. Kweli ni kazirai, kazirai ni kuchikwa na kupele kwa hospitali na kudungwa shindano ya kulala. Maana singeweza kukaa pale amba wange rusu ni kaya pale nione wakiokuwa mtoto wangu ni kiwa kwa kwa hiyo hali. Ni mekaa hospitalini, kifika saa tisa na muka na kumbuka mtoto, siko na yeye, kaomba. Kauliza jameni, meokuwa mtoto. Waka niambia, mtoto walianguka tukwa kisima, lakini wanasema walimpata tuwa mesimama ndani. Kumbe majirani wananidanganya, mtoto alisha kufa, na hata bado wa wajaokoa mtoto. Kawa ulisa mjahita hata wazima, ah, watu wafaya waviga, kaunti wakuja waniokole mtoto wangu. Waka niambia, tumeita ikashinikana. Nikasikia kulia, hata hospitalini madaktari wa, walikuwa wana give up na mimi. Waka sema, pana solution tumpeda watena ya two hours. Akiamuka, njyo tujaribu kumfanya counseling, tumpatia na fasi ya kuenda kuona maiti. Wakati walinitunga yoshi dano, I think ilikuwa na pima tu hizo tu hawa, sizikisha, ndakuwa ni meamuka. Nilipo amuka, nikawauliza, jina nizangu na wao na menizunguka watu watu. Nikiangalia ta wale marafiki ambao nilikuwa na wao, na nimekamu na mrefu bila kuwaona, wamenizunguka. Nikawauliza na omba. Munisaidia kujua. Mtoto alipona ama mtoto alikufa. Kuangalia rafiki zangu wote wanadia, hawana kitu wanaweza kunisaidia nayo. Hakuna mtu wata geuka upande wangu waniambie masi, kuko hivi, kuko hivi. Nikusikia du daktari ya kiniambia masi jikubali na ujipe mwa tuende mochari uwane mtoto. Ufiko mochari, Nikapata mtoto wangu, amekwa. 
kwa draw Nikiangalia mtoto ni mchafu hata hajatoa nguo nikauliza daktari daktari nisaidie na maji nioshe mtoto wangu mara ya mwisho juu nikiona mtoto amefura amekuwa mkubwa hata sio yule ninajua daktari akanambia sitakubali tuachie tu mtoto tutakutengenezea mtoto lakini nasikia Mauna niambia mtoto anasikia baridi na waambia nifupatieni lesson nifunike mtoto wangu anasikia baridi wana niambia mama ameshaenda hakuna baridi anasikia tena na hutamuona tena it was hard mimi kukubali nimepoteza mtoto nikikumbuka nimekuwa na yeye tumetembea hajagonjeka na bado mind in an ring mtoto amepatikana aje kwa kisima mtoto nani alirusha kwa kisima what i remember niliambia wale watu walikuja hospitali naomba wale maskari ambao wamekuja kuchukua mtoto wafuatilieni muulize waliona hapo ndani mabati na gunia kweli dunia ina huruma hakuna mabati ilipatikana pale hakuna gunia ilipatikana na jirani na ameniambia tu vizuri mtoto alianguka kwa kisima ameniambia vizuri mtoto alianguka kwa kisima na gunia na mabati nikasikia nimechoka mpaka kwa moyo wangu nimechoka mpaka mawazo Hakuna vile nitalala nikifikiria mtoto nimeamka naye asubuhi na mtoto saa hii ako mochari. Nilichoongea nilisema Mungu ni kama ni kwa ni mapenzi yako mimi nakubali. Lakini kama ni mapenzi ya mwanadamu Mungu nisaidie. Nikiwa niko nyumbani nimetoka hospitali nimeacha nimeambia watu wa mochari wanitengenezee mtoto. Msichana wangu akaniona nikilia nikalia sana na mtoto wangu akaniambia mama hata mimi nasikia uchungu nikiona ukilia. Mama, nataka nikuulize swali. Kwa nini fulani amenituma kwa duka? Na wakati mtoto alinifuata twende kwa duka, kwa nini alikataa nisiende na mtoto wetu? Mama, mtoto amekufa aje. Something that siezi ujibu mtoto wangu. Mimi ni mama, kuna venye nitamjibu ni mwambie blessing. Mtoto amekufa. Yeye ana insist, nataka kujua mama. Kwa nini alinituma kwa duka? Nataka kujua mama kwa nini? Hiyo mabati mama iko wapi? Nilikuwa nimefunika kisima. Kisima. Mama, mtoto wetu alianguka kwa kisima aje. Hard for me. Na wakati huo ninalia. Baba ya mtoto tuliachana hatuko pamoja. I've been raising my son alone. And I remember well nimesafa sana na huyo mtoto kuna time time nilikaa chini huyo mtoto nikawa mgonjwa sana kwa huo uoto wakati huo utu mwaka ukianza nikiwa na, na mtoto peke yangu kwa nyumba mtoto wangu dangetika hivi aniambie mama fanya anifanyie kitu hadi hata afike mahali ananiangalia na analia na nikawa nimejua Mungu amenibariki na mtoto ambaye atanisaidia kwa maisha inakuja baba ya mtoto alipokuja kwa sababu yeye ni mwanajeshi. Aliniambia tu mimi nimekatisha mtoto atazikwa Thursday. Nilijaribu njia yenye nitaambia watu wangu nipatieni muda at least naweza kumon mtoto wangu. Lakini ukiangalia culture yangu ya Kiluya inasema mtoto akikufa kifo ambacho amekufa kitu ya kwanza hata kadi duniani muda mrefu kitu ya pili anazikwa na anazikwa either usiku ama asubuhi ama jioni. Niliona dunia imebadilika. Nikajiona niko peke yangu. Nikajiona ni kama hakuna mtu ananisaidia nikiongea na wazazi wangu, wote wanakubaliana tu. Tutafanya venye tumesema, when you the mother uliza mtoto, you feel the pain and you know what what you are going through. I was suffering psychologically. Even I cannot eat. Yani it's only God who has enabled me far. Ikifika Baba sasa ameamua mtoto wake atazikwa Thursday. Na kwa sababu mtoto alikufia kwetu, mtoto ataenda kuzikwa kwa kina mwanaume. Nilikubali tu kwa sababu nimeshakuwa nimelemewa na maneno ya watu wengi. Inabidi sasa nikubali venye wazazi wananiambia na venye wale wananiambia.
Ikifika siku ya kwenda mochari niende nichukue mtoto wangu. Nimekaa hapo naambiwa na majirani. Aki ujirani yenu. Mbona hana roho ya huruma? Angengoja masi. Aweke mtoto wake kwa kaburi. Ndio angekuja kupoma kisima chenye mtoto alikufia ndani. Aanze kutumia hiyo maji. Mimi nimeenda kuzika mtoto wangu ninalia. Lakini jirani yangu mahali mtoto alikufia. Ako busy, ako nyumbani ameleta mafundi wanapoma. Ako nyumbani ameleta mafundi wanapoma, ninazika mtoto na bado wanachota maji kwa hiyo kisima wakitumia. Ni uchungu. Nikajiuliza kwa moyo, mbona hana huruma? Mbona hana huruma? Na yeye ni mama na amezaa kama mimi. Uchungu ya kupata mtoto ndani yake hakuna. Na kama kweli amefika level ya kufunika hiki kisima na anakitumia nikiwa sijazika mtoto. Kwa nini? Na kama kweli ananifanyia hivyo, mbona mtoto alipokufa sijajua alikufa aje? Na mbona mtoto akipimwa vile alikufa? Naambiwa huyu mtoto kitu ya kwanza hakukunywa maji. Ni kama mtoto alirushwa tu. It was hard. It was hard for me to accept Emmanuel as God. Nikaenda nikazika mtoto, nikatoa mtoto mochari saa tisa. Saa tisa, saa kumi, saa kumi na moja nilaingia kwa bomba na nusu. Saa kumi na mbili nilifika kwa bomba kwa sababu nimeambiwa hakuna kufanyia mtoto ibada. Mila yetu inaruhusu. Ilibidi nikubaliane kwa sababu sina nguvu, sina uwezo na sina mtu mwenye nitaangalia niseme huyu anaweza kunitetea. Mana nilifika mahali nikafikiria nazika mtoto wangu haraka na ninazika kama umbwa. Na sio kupenda kwangu kwa sababu nilikuwa najiuliza maswali kitu ya kwanza mtoto amekufa kifo ya accident kama wale wanapatanga accident za magari. Kwa nini mtoto wangu arushe kwa chimo tu kama umbwa? Kwa nini mtoto wangu azikwe hivi? Mwenye nasikia uchungu ni mimi mwenye nimebeba mimba miezi tisa. Lakini wale wenye wana plan kunizikia mtoto, nobody was there for me. Nobody could feel what I was going through. The only person who could look at me na one kweli mama yangu anaumia ni mtoto wangu nilikuwa na ems jana. Nikaezika mtoto, nikaenda nikakubaliana na wao. Wakafungulia watu wakaona maiti. Wakishaona maiti, nikutoka hapo kwenda kuongea maneno mawili matatu na kuweka mtoto kwa kaburi. Kinachonihuzuisha na kunihurumisha kwa moyo ni kwamba hata niki ni shughuli ya kuokoa mtoto ikikuwa misi kukua nilikuwa nimepeleka hospitali. Lakini nikikaa kwa mtandao naona kila mahali video za mtoto wangu vile alikuwa anaokolewa vile maiti ilikuwa watu wameposti post mpaka maiti ya mtoto kwa internet na some of them knew, they are people from home i try to najaribu kulilia justice lakini nasema hakuna pata hakuna hiyo justice inabidi watu wa familia waniambie must you just have to accept nikigeuka naambia baba ya mtoto jamedi unaona ati unachukuaje ya tua ananiambia kitu ya kwanza masi nataka nikuambie hata kama huyo jirani yenu anakunywa maji kwa kisima chenye mtoto wangu alikufia sikatai nikisema nataka kuchukua hatua masi kitu ya kwanza wewe na mimi ndio tumesaa mtoto. Wewe na mimi ndio tunaumia. Wewe na mimi ndio tumekufiwa. Hata tukifuatilia masi, hakuna mahali tutaenda. Tukifuatilia masi, kama ni kuua aliua, ni sawa tabi baba ya mtoto ninakubali, lakini hakuna mahali tutatoa tuta tena huyo mtoto. Nikikane naona ni kweli. The, during the period ninawezika mtoto, watu mimi nika faint. Nobody, hata I don't know what was happening. Because those ones who were on the internet, they, they, they were they, the ones who could tell me it was like this and that. But me, I wasn't there. I'm not going to be able to get a job. Because there's a friend of mine who took my phone and took my Facebook page. Yangu. So, I'm going to be able to get a Facebook page. Because I'm going to be able to TikTok. Sana. Watu wame post video ya mtoto wangu. Yani even those people that are done, wengine ni wakisi, wengine wajaluo. Then wame post. Now kikati kele liyako post, wameka hii wimbo ya uzuni. Enda fika salama.
Na mtu unapata mtu amechukua mpaka video kutoka mahali mtoto alianguka kwa kisima amechukua mpaka kwa zule mtoto alibebwa na bakuli fulani hivi mwenye wili bidi divers wachukue kwa zi, awa zimamoto walijaribu ku drain maji kashindikana divers ndio walienda juu mtoto alikuwa ameingia kwa matope sasa venye waliaka kwa ile kitu ilikuwa kama mashini imeconnectiwa ya kumtoa chini someone could take a picture si, simu anaingiza kwa shimo anachukua ule mtoto akipanda juu maiti ya mtoto wangu na na kuja ana edit ana post kwa internet. So nikiamka asubuhi nikifungua internet napata page kama ka, karibu karibu news feed yangu yote ni <laughs> Yaani nikipata news feed yangu napata kitu chenye siku shudia nikiona mtoto akiokolewa napata watu wanashare hata relatives weko wa nyumbani watu wa nyumbani wenye naheshimu nobody could feel the pain i was going to hakuna mtu ni kama some of them were celebrating and like kama kuna wenye walikuwa na celebrate na kuna wengine wako wana wanakaa chini wanafikiria what the mother is going through when they were nilikuwa na scratch nasema kweli dunia ina huruma dunia ingekuwa na huruma mtu angekuja kwangu aniambie masi nisaidie na picha tu ya mtoto at least ni post lakini kwa sababu dunia ina huruma mtu anachukua maiti ya mtoto ananiwekea kwa internet mpaka the closest friend of mine ndio inabidi sasa niende live kwa page yangu nianze kuambia watu tafadhali munisaidie kukataza watu wenye wana share video za mtoto wangu wananiumiza wanafanya moyo wangu kuwa mgumu ilifika mali I, i thought of committing suicide the very day nikajaribu nikibie siku ya, ya kwenda kuzika ndio niende nitoe mtoto nikikumbuka that thing na naona badi naenda kwa internet na jaribu ku call cross relatives na wambie hebu mkataza watu fulani wasinifanyie hivyo naona wananifanyia unyama nikafika mali nikaona ni kama nobody ananisikiza nikajaribu kufikiria niende nianguke kwa maji na nimevaa nguo nyeupe kulingana na vile dini za kwetu unafauzike mtoto na nguo nyeupe naenda naona fadhali mtoto akizika na mimi ni kweli nimeenda na maji tukufe wote maana the, depre- the, 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 the depression was real i really suffered psychologically when i look at my mother i look at my father when i'm morning they, they are there telling me ati wacha tu mungu wacha kulia masi masi tunajua unasikia uchungu na wauliza mama mnajua ile uchungu ninasikia kweli naambia mama yangu mama yangu litozaa watoto wote hujawaizika mama hujaiona kaburi venye naka lakini mimi mwenye nimezika mama you don't know what i'm going through sasa mama yangu anafika mali ananiambia enyewe najua mtoto wangu naumia naumia kama mama mama lakini sina uwezo hata wa kwenda kwa hiyo internet niambia watu wasikutendee hivi na umia hata ningekuwa na uwezo ningewaambia waache kufanyia mtoto wangu venye wanafanya kienda familia yake na mtoto bado wanaona the same same thing news zimekuwa all over social media nikienda opera mini naona wameea mtoto wangu nikienda kwa news and naona tu mtoto wako huko ukika unasikia radio stations karibu za kwetu zote zimetangaza kifo ya huyo mtoto it was really painful yani it was kifo yenye sijawahi imagine inaweza nifanyikia in life ama kweli Mungu anakuanga amepangia kila mtu maisha yake ya kwangu yalionekana kuwa machungu yalikuwa kuwa machungu kwa sababu kuna wale wenye wamekaa hapo they are there telling yani watu waliongea kila walitaka kuongea hata sometimes uko jazika mtoto lakini unasikia stories zinakuja ende ni mwambie masi tumesema hata akatai tusiweke mtoto wake kwa internet watu watakuja kujionea tu siku ya kuzikwa na watajua mtoto wake alikufa that time they are using my my enemies some of my enemies are using my closest friends kukuja kuniambia such a thing during my time ambao nina mall what i can remember is siku kwa ninatembea nilikuwa na shindanga tu kama nimelala my mama alikuwa na shinda kama amekaa tu na mimi cause nilikuwa anga namwambia kila kati mama nafikiria tu kufanya kitu yenye itanifanya nisikae kwa hii dunia nilikuwa nashinda kwa nyumba siku anataka marafiki nilikuwa nalala tu kwa nyumba and the person who was close to me alikuwa my mom nikiwa nalala tu nalala tunaamka nalala tunaamka one day nikiwa nimelala wale nilikuwa nafanya nao job the moja kani call best yangu sana kanambia masi unarudi umeambiwa na boss urudi job lini nikamwambia 
ajaniambia lakini nilikuwa naona anipea one month ni mon kwanza mtoto Masi. Masi akaniambia mimi nasikia Masi unasikia uchungu. The, my friend pia alikuwa anatoa Masi. Akaniambia najua unasikia uchungu. But inaplaniwa huko job ufutwe nini? Kazi. Nikamwambia oh inaplaniwa hivyo akaniambia si kwa ubaya mimi nakupenda wewe ni rafiki yangu. Lakini jana tukiwa meeting nilisikia tu oh Masi akiendelea kukaa nyumbani hizo wiki zingine hakuna kazi atapata ata kazi and i felt it but singeza kuongea mbele ya boss but out of everybody ambao alisikia i thank god it was just that friend of mine ndiye aliniambia watu wengine wote walinyamaza nilikuwa nafanya nao job mimi nikapigia boss simu nikamwambia boss kweli mtoto wangu alikufa kifo yenye si mzuri boss kukubali na kuheal ina take long nipatie tu another two weeks in morning mtoto wangu then nitaku nitakuja kazi he never replied to me alinyamaza tu after kunyamaza <coughs> mimi nika ka nikaambia mamangu acha mamu nimemaliza mwezi nimemaliza mwezi acha niende job mama nitarudi kwa sababu Siki kandele kuka hapa sina mbele sina nyuma sioni kama kuna venye maisha itaendelea mimi nilienda kuingia kwa ofisi boss aka, akasema ati masi asiingie kazi arudi kesho kurudi nikiingia kwa ofisi aliniambia tu live kazi yako nikamuuliza uko serious kazi yako nikamwambia ta mimi nikamwambia tu tukiwa pale boss tafadhali Unaona huyu bugu angekuwa anasikia kilio changu. Lakini si azimu la umu, anatekingi long kujibu mtu. Ningemwambia Mungu kama ulijua mtoto wangu anaenda kukufa, ungechukua hii kazi mapema na huyu mtoto fanye nini? Uniachie. Nilitamani Mungu anichukue. Hakuna maisha, nikasema kweli sasa hakuna maisha. Ni kama nimebaki peke yangu kwa hii dunia. The only person who was there for me was my mom and dad. Marafiki zangu according to Mila ya Waluya, I could tell my friends kujeni munione. Nasikia niko lonely. Nikitoka nataka kwenda kutembelea marafiki zangu. Unasikia mtu anakuambia kuja lakini usimame tu kwa geto usiingie. Nauliza mtu kwa nini? Kumbe inasemekana kuwa kikwetu ukizika mtoto sasa kumbe hao marafiki zangu wakikaa wanaambiana Al, masi alizika mtoto na mtoto wake alikufa kifo mbaya atumtake hata sikuje kwetu wakikaa wanakaa hivyo the same same people watakuja tena kuja kuniambia unajua fulani alisema usitaki uende kwake kwa sababu ukienda huko e, mtoto wako alikufa kifo mbaya utampelekea kisirani nilibaki peke yangu na mama yangu na baba yangu unafika mahali mtu anakuambia masi wachia Mungu Ayubu alikufa, ali watoto wa Ayubu walikufa wote. Mali Ayubu ikaisha na Mungu akafanya nini akamrudishia. Sasa mimi nafika baadhi nasema, Mungu unajua mtu ambaye anaweza nikalisha na anipe moyo ni Ayubu ndiye amepitia. Lakini wewe umesoma na hujapitia, unajaribu kukompea. Ukivaa kile kiatu ndio utajua ni uchungu kuliko venye umesoma kwa Biblia ilikuwa. Lakini ukikaa na Ayubu atakuwa na ile nguvu ya kukuambia masi ilikuwa hivi na hivi na kweli hata kukula ni shida. Kukaa ni shida. Mimi saa hii siezi kukaa na, ma, na wamama tunapiga story. Kitu ya pili, mimi saa hii siezi kukaa mali watoto wako, especially boys. Especially boys. Nikikaani kutane na mtoto mvulana rika ya mtoto wangu cause my son nilikuwa nimemweka dreadlocks. Nikiona any boy ako na dreadlocks zinadiumba. Nasikia ni kama dunia imenibadilika. Healing is a process. Healing is a process. You cannot heal within two months. When I sit like this nasema ah hii mwezi wa saba nimekuwa tu na mtoto wangu. Ni akili ainipi. Akili ainipi kabisa. Naona bado mwaka ijaisha. Nasema Mungu, what really happened? Sina kazi. Una mahali penye utaenda unaambia mtu hata kazi ya kufua tu ukisikia niitie hata kama ni kazi ya kuuza ama ya kufanya ni niitie tu nikuje niko tayari kufanya mtu anakwambia masi kumekauka kuko hivi you tell someone ni support hata nisaidie na kitu fulani na jaribu hata ningangane niseme sasa cha niende nifanye kazi hata kama ni Saudi Arabia nini niona kama ile mawazo itanitokea bado naona hata nikitoka niende hiyo nje ya nchi 
kama sina tu mahali penye nitapata tu ila amani hakuna siwezi kaa na relatives wangu nikikaa na wao they keep on reminding me keep on reminding me ama unapata marafiki wanakuja wanakuambia hui na msi suli kumbesa mtoto smart naanza kusema hao watu hawajui ujui what i'm going through those they are just telling me such things it is really painful it is really painful it is really painful ukitoka unataka wewe utafute psychologist wa kukuongelesha you have to pay for it at that time unaangalia huna job uliachwa hivyo hata nini kifutwa kazi si kupewa hata shilingi si kupewa hata ile yenye unaweza pewa hata fair si kupewa fair fair mama yangu ni alinitumia akanambia mtoto wangu toka bungoma urudi nyumbani sahi namomba Mungu anipe amani kitu ya kwanza kitu ya pili Mungu anipe moyo wa kujikubali na mimi matamanio ya moyo wangu ani kulingana na mahali penye nilikuwa nimefika saa hii hata sikuwa na ima, nataka kuka Kenya I just felt like nika nje mbali tu nasikia tu hakuna place naenda na kana man lakini inabidi nikubali ni kwe ni kwetu but sa, for now ni Mungu tu anifungulie njia nikipata tu kama ni biashara I do business ama nipate tu kazi mahali penye ndajishikilia hata kama ni kazi yote tu unajua ukiwa kwa ukuta uwezi choose anything you can just do at least nikiwa mahali na keep busy itansaidia nini mawazo ku, kurudi sawa but wakati na kato peke yangu nikifikiria nisipoenda kwa facebook page yangu kwa, pe, kwa facebook page yangu nikuwe live na interrupt na watu ama nisinanga kabisa it is because unajua sometimes when you are idol thinking inakuwa juu yani stress ina inapanda but yeah, i know we are serving a god of justice and we are serving a living god one day god will wipe away my tears one day god will make everything happen again in my life i've lost almost everything but i just thank god for the life because even now as i'm talking i couldn't be alive i can't sit down and imagine i tried to throw myself in that way hole that in that bore hole i tried but this lady i think this lady prepared this this neighbors early psychologically because she, maybe she knew i might drown myself in that wall bar hall and pick my son but if that if ningekuwa nimefanya hivyo i couldn't be alive by now i could be dead so god has got so many reasons to why i am still alive and i think he's still a living god and he will make a way i just trust the process even though healing is a process it's hard for me to accept my son died just like that but i know if if the pain i'm going through is the same pain god job went through then we are serving a living god he has got so many reasons to why some things are happening in our life and if it was my time for me to mourn and shed tears i will shed but it's the only god who will it's god only who will wipe away my tears though i'm suffering psychologically kabisa i want to thank him for the time alinipea mtoto nikalea i want to thank him for what he provided sometimes i was down but he could provide something then we could share with my son my late son and i don't have to question him i'm not questioning him anymore because he has got so many reasons to why he took my son away and he has got so many reasons to why he allowed my son to die that painful death it is a painful death it's not a death that uh, any woman would wish to bury his or her child like that i want to thank god for my friends also and i want to thank god for my enemies also because even the bible says we should be thankful to god in everything we do in everything that happens in our life we just it may it be good or bad we just have to thank god i just have to thank god even for the opportunities i'm getting to express myself even though it is not easy such a story is not easy atas jasema yote because if i dig myself in deep into that story i might find myself in tears instead of explaining and sometimes when i'm explaining it is part of healing it's part of healing because that time they never gave me enough time to mourn my son and when you know when you are mourning it is part of healing also i could mourn then my people people from my tribe could tell me must you uh, you're not supposed to 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 to, to cry why 
when someone has died such a death, he or she, the mother or the father is not supposed to mourn. You just have to keep quiet. I think you understand. So vitu za mila ziliingia mingi kwa kifo cha huyo mtoto. Yaani mtoto akikufa kifo kama kile hakuna kupiga nduru, hakuna kulia, hakuna kufanya nini, you just have to be there. You can imagine how you can control tears when you are in that pain. But I just thank God he enabled me. So No is also doing replacement. He will replace Emmanuel one day one time. I know because Emmanuel meets God with us, then he's with God, I think.